We are the 22nd of December. It is Christmas in two days. And on the 24th at around 9 p.m. Mexico time, uh, my family will land. And so that gives us three full days because now it is 9.30 a.m. Um, so it gives us, yeah, three full days to get to Mexico City. Hey, this is Next Meridian. We are Nick and Mathilde and we left everything behind to travel the world with our Land Rover Defender Albatross. Three years, seven continents, 88 countries and just the road as a home. In the last episode, we traveled in the south of Baja California, Mexico, with our friends Cody and Olivia, with whom we even exchanged vehicles for 24 hours. You can rewatch the video at the little link I put in the corner. The loop of the South Baja is now complete. It's time to go catch the ferry to mainland Mexico. We have so much more to discover in this country. Hopefully, that is what the next weeks will be about. But before that, we are on a deadline. We have three days to travel from the south of Baja California to Mexico City. Do you think we will make it? Little stop in Todos Santos to rent some surfboards. Uh, we found a little shop that does that. It's a bit pricey, so we're only going to rent one. And Olivia has one, so we're gonna have two boards for four people. Ready? Yeah, ready. Ready for the surf? So ready for the surf. Ready to just get pounded by the waves because I'm gonna suck. Exactly. That's great. That's what you need. <laughs> that's great. That's what, spirit. That's what we're all going for right <laughs> now. I, I Ciao! <laughs> That is about everything we can show you about our lack of talent in surfing, but we love it and it was a lot of fun. So just before we leave Baja, let's check out some last images of the beauty of this place. that made Baja so exceptional. But every good thing must come to an end and it was time to say goodbye to Cody, Olivia and Ron. <laughs> Cheers for our final night! I know you'll use my beer as well. Cheers! <laughs> have 36 hours to reach Mexico City. Let me explain. We are due to the country's capital for Christmas Eve, 1,600 kilometers away, where Nicholas' family is going to meet us. To reach the rest of Mexico, we could drive, but that would take us days, or jump on a ferry boat across the Gulf of California to Sinaloa, which is an overnight sail. 
our issue is that at that specific moment, boats going to our destination Mazatlan were reduced and completely overbooked, so we had to consider taking a ferry to a city north, Topolobampo, which added several hours of drive to our journey. For those who followed recent news in Mexico, we anticipate your comments related to the arrest of El Chapo's son, which created localized events of violence along this specific road. But we crossed way before those events, so no worries. We said goodbye to Cody and Olivia this morning. Now we're in the port of La Paz. We are trying to catch a ferry that will bring us on mainland Mexico, or just Mexico. Uh, the issue is that some ferries have been cancelled because of maintenance. So they're all like fully, 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 fully booked in the next weeks. Uh, so we're on different like waiting lists that we registered already 10 days ago. And we hope we can nail a spot today. So we're going around trying to be on waiting lists and make our case. We came super early in the morning to be sure we have a spot. Okay, we are now both on the waiting list for Baja Ferries, which is the more expensive one, and TMC, which is the cheaper one where we can sleep in our car, like it's really the best option. I just went back, very good news, the TMC Ferry, which is the cheap one where we can sleep in the car. They have one spot for us, they just told us you need to go wait your car, bring us the official statement of what's the weight of the car, and then come back to buy your ticket. We are going to mainland Mexico! Go wait that heavy baby! Hola. 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 No. We're good, we have a ticket for Topolo Bambo. Uh, I negotiated, I tried to get a spot for Mazatlan, which is a port that is more south, more on our route. Um, I mean, better in every way, but they didn't let me get one. And I would have lost this one if I, if I was waiting for the other one. So anyways, uh, we're going to take this one, it's better than nothing. It leaves at 9 p.m. and it's a 10 hour ferry. Here, waiting for our turn on the boat, on the ferry, I must say. Just chilling. So, it's got the Drive to Survive iPad ready, waiting for Matilda to come back. Got some chips, uh, and more chips, and just waiting for the ferry. This is our boat, Santa Marcella. I can't wait. I like boat travels. It's relaxing. Let's go check out on Nick. Nick, are you looking forward to crossing the mainland? I'm super excited to cross the mainland. More culture, more history, more Spanish. Here it's awesome, but it's desert and beach, so nature, nature, nature. Right now we're on the ferry. We're actually at the very, very bottom of the boat and we asked if we could go to a higher level but they said that the boat was probably full and because our car was low, uh, we had to come down here. So because uh, it's not high enough to open the roof, we could only open it this much and I found actually on the floor over there like a lot of cloth. So I just put a cloth so that it's not rubbing against the roof ceiling. And uh, I guess this is where we're gonna sleep tonight.
tenemos dos billetes para comer. Two tickets for food. So we're gonna have dinner on the boat. And then go back to our car and just enjoy a nice sleep in the, in the boat. Just gave the ticket and there was basically one option, which is this soup with tortilla. So we're gonna have that. Long story short, they ended up closing entirely the section of the boat where we were with no way to exit except through emergency ladders going through a maze of corridors. So we spent the next 12 hours stuck without natural light in the under of a boat. Spooky. So we can hear the boat has arrived but since they've locked us in we can't figure out if we're in a uh or not but we can hear a lot of noises and things happening so i think we've arrived so while we wait for them to open the big latch uh, we are making cereals for breakfast the both of us with a bit of milk so it's cheerios honey mm. how did we sleep last night it was okay it was okay time for breakfast Whoa. Of the hole. Out of the hole. <laughs> this is the sunlight. <laughs> We've been trapped for 12 hours in this hole of a boat. And we are in Topolo Pambo. I think it feels great to see colorful houses like this. Welcome to mainland Mexico. Yes. Yes. We are the 22nd of December, it is Christmas in two days and on the 24th at around 9 p.m. Mexico time uh, my family will land and so that gives us three full days because now it is 9.30 a.m. Um, so it gives us yeah, three full days to get to Mexico City and uh, there's 1,450 kilometers we're going to take the highway. It is 18 hours of road on the GPS, which is probably going to be more like 24 hours of road, or maybe 20 hours with the checkpoints. I have no idea, we'll find out. So that means it's two days of just highway, which is a pity, because we're going to miss a lot of nice stuff. It will be fine. We have to go win some and we'll lose some. That's all right. And spending Christmas with the family is a plus. Yeah, definitely. That's also why we're going there the 24th night. Okay, we took the road and headed onto the highway. The reason why we took the highway is because it was much faster, because we knew there was no checkpoints, we knew that it was more straight, uh, less topes. Uh, tope are the bumps, the speed bumps that you get in towns or cities in a lot of places. So on the highway, there's very few of them or almost none. Uh, the only difference is that, of course, you have to pay for the highway and the highway is very expensive. We found it very expensive. Mm -hmm. Pretty well done here. They have these big panels here with the pricing, so you know already how much you need to prepare. So 83 peso, which is around four dollars, four euros as well. And then you have the whole highway to yourself for a while. It is a bit expensive, I think, but it is much faster than a normal road. And there's one probably like what every 45 minutes. Hola. Hola, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Okay, gracias, chao. 83 pesos. And you end up with a lot of coins. Actually, update, it's not every 45 minutes, but sometimes it's every 20 minutes. We're now at the next payment. And uh, these ones are cheaper. They're like 30 peso, but... Um, it's a lot of checkpoints. Lot Calculated, it's actually pretty expensive. It's very similar to French prices. So far, we paid around 2,046 pesos. And we've done, what, half of the way? Which is the equivalent of 100 euros. So I think in total, we made the calculation. We paid, I think, 150 to 200 euros 
of toll roads from um, Topo all the way until Me Mexico City. We are stuck in a traffic jam, so I'm editing videos, Nick is driving, and there's a car that just passed us super slowly and they were like, hi Nick, hi Mathilde, and we were laughing so much, they just like googled the account on the car, but that's the nice thing about traffic jam, it just time to chat with people. Yep. Yeah. What? What? What just happened? I'm so embarrassed. Um, somebody just gave us a thousand peso for our trip because uh, we're stuck in traffic for like an hour, and they're like, "Well, you know, you need a lot of gas for your trip and everything, and this traffic here is using up your gas." And we were like, "No, no, 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 no!" You know, super. I still feel really weird about it. So I think they're Mexican originally, but they live in California. Anyway, when we come back past them, I, I'm gonna tell them, let's quickly take a picture. Can we keep them Is there anything we can keep them? Well, we have a sticker next Meridian. We can give them a sticker, I guess, but that's an expensive sticker. <laughs> <laughs> thousand peso sticker. So a thousand peso is like 50, 50 euros. euros. Lots of money. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> right now it's, we just got 200, 200 peso from another guy. Uh, apparently, is the cousin of the first car, and we were like, No, we, we can't take any more money. This is already too nice. And he's like, This is just so you can pay the the bill of the of the toll road. And I was like, No, really, really, it's okay. We, we, we can pay for it. And he's like, No, 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 take it, take it. <laughs> stations so we would usually go to the gas station as if we could sleep behind the gas station would be less sound less noise and usually they say yes the reason why we didn't do wild camp is because we just wanted to go uh, also because um, we had a lot of kilometers to do and we'd be driving literally all day from like 9 a.m. until almost 6 p.m. it was tough it was a lot of driving but it's fine it is 7 10 we've been on the road since what nine? Probably nine. But there's uh, also an hour change. Ah, there was an hour change on our road. Okay, it's as if we were on the road since then, and we've been stuck for almost two hours in traffic jam. Uh, yeah. So one last peaje tour, and then we should find a place to sleep. first day of driving on mainland Mexico. As Nick explained, we are going to meet his family in Mexico, hence like us being in a hurry, because today is 22nd, we're meeting them on 24th, and we don't want them to wait for us. I mean, they're crossing the world to see us. So where do we sleep tonight? We still didn't quite figure out how we're going to manage our campsites in Mexico, and here we're really in a rush. So we heard the best place are petrol station so we are parked on this petrol station parking lot and we're going to sleep here for tonight um it looks very 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 clean and i'm sure it's going to be great i mean great serving its purpose being on the side of the road because we still have another i think 15 hours to go maybe 12 yeah so we have a lot of road um filming this i realize it's so far from the dreamy um, travel channel, like especially after our like weeks in Baja California, this looks so different. But I guess it's part of travel. <laughs> Yesterday evening, we're stuck in a cargo boat in the bottom of it, trapped, and today we're sleeping on a petrol station parking. Great reality of travel. 
Despite the monotonous and pretty boring aspect of this trip, we did manage to make it a bit funner. Guide to make a long drive on the highway more entertaining. Step 1. If a town on your route is called Tequila, stop to check it and grab a 11.30 am shot. Today we're going to Tequila and we're gonna get a shot of Tequila, just one, and then back on the road. <laughs> Let's do this. Tequila is not only the birthplace of the drink, but also a beautiful historic town. It's really nice to see a bit more old stones compared to Baja California and the States or Canada. Uh, it's so nice, you have paved streets, look, very awesome. And then old churches. It's a change, huh? It is. Yeah. It's cool. It's funny. Let's and it's super warm. It's nice. Let's find that tequila looks shot. very, very lively here. Yeah, let's go. Castro Line, Cuervo, and Castro Line. And you, what do you prefer? Well, I like this much. This is very rich. Okay. And the reposado or the plata? Well, it depends. Do you like it to be a lot or a little bit softy? I think I prefer the reposado. Reposado? Your reposado? Yes, reposado. In a double shot pequeño? In a caja de gay. Yes. It's noon. And we're drinking tequila. In Tequila Town. We have to try <laughs> The best way to start the tequila day. Tequila at 12.30. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's good. The salt is really thick. There you go. Look at that cup. Oh, oh my, my gosh. That's huge. Take a picture of it. Step 2 to make the road funner, never miss a chance to eat street food. At the street side taqueria you will stop. We stopped right here on the side of the road uh, to get some tacos. Now that we're on mainland, we want to test out different uh, varieties, different foods. And we want to try in the localest place possible. Look at this place. It looks just perfect. The menu over there has a lot of things that we don't know, even Google Translate couldn't figure it out. So now we're just Googling them all one by one and they look so good. Yeah, it's like, basically it's the same kind of meat, it's either pork or beef or lamb, but like cooked with different um, seasoning, spices, in different ways. So which one are you looking at now? Cochinita, traditional Yucatec Mayan slow roasted pork dish from Yucatan Peninsula. That looks so good. Looks good. Is that the one you're ordering? Uh, yeah, I'll I'll try that. Cool. Mm. Tasty. Mm. Mm. This one is carne de puerco with green salsa. So pork meat with green salsa. Step 3. Diversify your journey. Take any excuse to go to random towns to do the tasks you need to do. That will make you visit new places on the way. Like this one time we needed to print a random permit for driving in the town of Mexico. So we had to look around for a printing shop. We found it, but that's what we like about uh, being on mainland is that compared to Baja, like the towns are much more lively, it's less geared to our tourists, so it's actually pretty nice. At the printer shop getting the files printed. Yes, Muchas gracias. This document needs to be done online. It's one file, but they send you two pieces of paper, maybe one for the front, one for the back of the car, I don't really know. And to drive into Mexico so they don't get stopped because there's so much pollution that they 
depending on your plate number and what is your final digit on there, you have a specific day you can drive and not drive, and then you have time of days where you can and can't drive. I mean, it's very complicated, but if you're a tourist, you can get seven to 14 days per six months or per year for free. And so since we're only gonna be spending seven days, even less in Mexico City, we got this, it's free. And now we can drive in Mexico City. Good job. Bam. This is the last stretch of road toward Mexico City. We just have a few hours left. And today is, today is also Christmas Day. And just like that, the road went much faster and it was almost over. You know you arrived toward Mexico City as you look at the elevation. We suddenly found ourselves at 2,500 meters elevation. Mexico is the 8th highest country capital town in the world and is surrounded by volcanoes. going to drive through Mexico City everyone was like oh don't go with the car it's really chaotic to drive in there leave the car outside take a bus or take a train what most people don't know is that Nick thrives in chaotic like driving he like he gets like wing growing out of his back we're talking about a guy who got his driving license in Ethiopia and drove in India <laughs> How do you feel right now? I feel in my element. Uh, I like it because it's there's a lot more adrenaline. You have to be very censored of everything that's going on left and right. And what's funny is the more I come to these places, I just sink in to the way the people drive. And so in Ethiopia, I was driving like Ethiopians. When I drove in Paris, I drove like the Parisians. Uh, when I drive in... Uh, I don't know, now in Mexico City I drive like the Mexicans. So I'm not worried at all. Like if we have to cut cars, cut corners, drive on things, then I will do it just like they do. We made it to Mexico City in the 36 hours all the way from Baja California. What a journey. And what we discovered is a beautiful and green capital town. But we will show you that next week because there is way too much to say. And now we need to hug Nick's family. They just knocked at the door. See you next week. Ciao. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Ciao, friends. Oh, your face. <laughs> Is it okay? Yeah. It's strong? It's actually better than the cheap tequila. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's because he 